In this module, we'll look at politeness as one of the tools we could use to analyze discourse. So what is politeness? Politeness is one of these epiphenomena. It's, it's hard to really point to in and of itself. Politeness is an impression that is related to a lot of other factors, empirical factors, which might be present in a discourse. So politeness does have to do at least partially with formality or distance. This may be the case when I know a person well, so we have familiarity, but we're in a formal setting. It's a setting that requires us to speak in formal ways. Or it could be one that even though we know each other well, um, the kinds of knowledge we have of each other are limited, um, which involves a certain amount of distance. This could be that actually we know each other well, but there was some bad blood between us or some reason that I sort of want to, that you're familiar, but we're not intimate. Um, this could take the form of careful pronunciation, the choice of more academic or higher register lexical items, um, more complex syntax. Another dimension of politeness is hesitance or deference or honor. So as opposed to formality, where which is more of a product of the setting or the occasion, the genre, hesitance or deference or honor, this has more to do with the power differential between two speakers. Um, maybe, again, it's possible that I'm very familiar with this person, but my role is a lower status role. So because of that, like speaking to a judge or the president or a boss or an elderly relative, um, I need to defer to that person to honor that person. Again, this could be shown through careful pronunciation, the use of honorific mark titles like sir or ma'am. Some languages actually have honorific endings or certain variants of verbs or nouns that are used to show honor. Um, face preservation is another aspect of politeness. We actually could be of equal status and have an informal yet and even intimate relationship but because there's a potential face threat, so politeness isn't then a product of our relationship or a product of the setting, politeness is going to be required because of what I'm asking you to do or because of the social activity that we're engaged in where it might threaten your face. So I need to be polite to you to minimize the threat to your positive or to your negative face. Um, if I'm not polite, one possible outcome, a positive outcome by not showing a lot of politeness is that it marks equality or camaraderie or solidarity. If I use sort of a bare form of the language that doesn't involve a lot of politeness, that's, this can signal that I see you as an equal, that we're, we're friends, we have an intimate relationship. But of course, if I misjudge that, if I see us as being equals or comrades and you disagree, you see there being some level of distance between the two of us, then a lack of politeness can have a negative outcome. That negative outcome we usually call rudeness, right? Which can really affect the kinds of social capital that I could draw from you in the future. So politeness has two different forms as we spoke of. There's positive politeness, which is politeness appealing to the other person's positive face. This is politeness which makes the other person feel liked and approved of. And there's negative politeness, which is politeness appealing to the other speaker's negative face. This is politeness which makes the other person feel free and unimpeded and independent. So common forms of positive politeness would be compliments, um, signs which index friendliness, maybe the choice of y'all or you guys as a second person plural pronoun in English, um, use of informal lexical variants um, like shotgun for the passenger seat of a car or hang out um, for spend timing, spending time with, exaggerating kindness. This is often done in intonation range or voice quality like, oh my gosh, that's so amazing, where I'm speaking in a much higher pitch than I normally would and exaggerating the distance between my highest and lowest pitch points in those intonation contours. Um, positive impoliteness or rudeness would be, you know, threatening people's sense that they're normal, that they're well socialized. So saying that no one does it that way, you're a weirdo, you're unusual, um, that you were behaving badly, who raised you, these kinds of things would be a threat to positive face. So that would be a form of positive impoliteness or positive rudeness. Um, negative politeness, the way that this normally forms is apologizing, pre-apologizing or post-apologizing for any imposition or any threat to someone's independence. 
indexing overtly your deference or honor, the power distance between the two speakers, um, being indirect using these indirect speech acts where my illocutionary force is different than the elocutionary form of the thing that I'm saying, especially when imposing on others. So negative impoliteness or negative rudeness would be making demands on you, like, hey, give that to me, or hey, do that for me. Giving a bare sort of command, which is unimpeded, is a direct threat to your sense of independence.